Oh, hey guys, Mike in the Woods here. It's a warm one out today. As part of my channel's mission of combining tech with outdoors adventures, I've been experimenting with different ways of generating power out in the woods using renewable resources. Uh, a while back, I showed you guys a couple of DIY thermoelectric generators I worked on to use twig stoves and campfires as a way to generate electricity. Shout out to my subscribers that have been around since then. I'll link that video up at the top of the screen. I highly recommend watching that one first to get up to speed. Since then, I've done quite a few experiments uh, to varying degrees of success. And I've finally arrived at a useful, high quality DIY build that can generate five watts of power while being completely passively cooled. And it's useful for charging phones, battery banks, and really anything else via USB. And the best part, the whole thing can be built for under $150 Canadian. So subscribe if you haven't already, and let's take a look. If you're not sure how thermoelectric generators work, the TLDR is that they use a difference in temperature between the bottom and top. It's often misunderstood that it uses heat itself to generate power, but in reality it uses a difference in temperature, which is a small but important distinction. So first let's talk about my prior designs. Prior to my final build, I had been using these 4.8 volt chips off of Banggood. Don't use them, they're shit. They're really fragile and not built to handle high temperatures. All my air-cooled designs wound up having the wires burn and the ceramic sealant melt off, causing the wires to just come right off. And all of this on relatively low heat. The water-cooled design held up much better. I took it out on a camping trip to put it through its paces. Link up at the top of the screen if you want to watch that trip. I had drilled a hole in the base of the water tub to allow the water to drain, so I would only need to add fresh, cool water instead of having to detach the whole cable assembly, dump the bin, put in fresh water over and over again. This worked really well, actually, in that the chips are still intact despite the wiring being cooked to a crisp. It still generates power to this day. The downside to that design is that it took so much work keeping it going. I would have to feed fresh water into it every few minutes, and I was making several trips to the water tap an hour and having to haul it back to my campsite. Not to mention it requires your constant attention, preventing you from doing anything else of substance while you keep it going. In short, I think this water cool design would only really work well if you are directly near a water source and you have a lot of time to dedicate to it. So going forward, I decided to stick to purely passively cooled designs so that it could be left alone 24 7 to do its thing other than attending to the campfire to charge even overnight from residual coals after all of these educational failures i figured out the two main upgrades i needed to do in order to increase the durability and reliability the first is that i needed a much higher quality teague chip to withstand the higher temperatures and the second is that i needed insulated wire for the same reason including the chance that the wire will be exposed to direct flame and so for the new thermoelectric generator chip i decided to go with the hz2 chip from high z technology recommended to me by this helpful redditor they make larger more powerful chips as well but i went with the smaller 2.5 watt chips for this build they can handle sustained temperatures of 200 degrees celsius and intermittent temperatures of up to 400 400 degrees Celsius, marking a huge upgrade over the old chips that max out at 150 degrees Celsius. Then for the wires, I went with fiberglass insulated wires that can handle up to 500 degrees Celsius. Aside from that, I decided to keep the actual USB charger dongle separated so that I could either just rest it on top of the heat sinks or completely keep it outside of the path as the heat as needed. The build is pretty straightforward. I'll have a complete parts list in the description. Heads up that the Amazon links are affiliates. I used a small aluminum tray as my hot side platform. I chose it this way so that the heat sinks are kept out of the direct convective updraft from the heat below. I connected the wires to the terminals on the chips simply by tightly twisting the wires to the chips positive and negative terminals. And with these specific Teague chips, unlike the crap ones I was using, they are not electrically insulated. The surfaces are the thermocouples of the chip. You get these little ceramic wafers to keep it separated from the metal of the tray and the heat sinks. For the heat sinks, I'm just using some cheap tower style deep cool four pipe heat sinks, nothing fancy. They're really not meant for convective cooling, but I find they work fine even in dead air inside. Outdoors, where there's usually always a breeze, they become much more efficient, especially in colder weather. 
To glue everything together, you want to use a silicone-based thermal adhesive that is not electrically conductive. Layering everything together with it, it goes tray, ceramic wafer, chip hot side, and then on the chip's cold side, another ceramic wafer, and then the heatsink. Additionally, some extra adhesive was put on the wire terminals to hold them in place better, and another ceramic wafer under the chip terminals to prevent shorting of the wire on the contact tray. The two chips are wired in parallel to this little screw terminal, providing a max output of 3.3 volts at 1.5 amps, or 5 watts. This input and output is soldered to a USB boost converter, which boosts the voltage to the standard 5 volt USB charging voltage. The downside to thermoelectric is that it's really heavy and bulky. This build is over 1 kilogram, is relatively fragile, and only puts out 5 watts of power at peak efficiency. In weight and space, it just does not stack up to solar panels. But in situations where the sun's blocked, such as a particularly wooded area, it might be an option, especially when you consider that, unlike solar, which is limited to the daytime, thermoelectric can go 24-7 as long as you have heat from the campfire to charge, even if it's just dwindled down to coals. And coals can last a while, even being hot enough to reignite your fire first thing in the morning, so you can leave your thermoelectric generator to charge stuff overnight and likely still have it going in the morning. Doing some rough napkin math, you get about the equivalent of six full hours of direct sunlight for your solar panels a day, which means that this 5 watt thermoelectric generator in the space of a 24 hour period is the efficiency equivalent of a 20 watt solar panel if you keep it going all day and all night. So version 2 is definitely an improvement, but there's still room for even more improvements. The method of attaching everything together with adhesive is fragile, leaving it very easy to break. Feature revisions might be better served by attaching the heatsink to the chip with a metal underplate. Now that I've solved the major problems, I can proceed with making my larger build that'll be using a charge controller for charging larger things, before finally, in the future, building a 1500 watt thermoelectric rig for charging my Cybertruck out in the woods just because I can. Like I said, a complete parts list is in the description if you want to build your own, and let me know down below if you have any questions for your specific build. If you're new to the channel, I combine fun, futuristic technology with traditional outdoors experiences. Check out my other videos and consider subscribing if that's your thing. See you next video, guys.